A dispute over Muslim women wearing traditional Islamic headscarves in schools and colleges is causing religious tensions in India. Last month, a government-run school for girls in the city of Erdpi banned students from wearing hijabs. Protests condemning the ban are now taking place across the country. Educational institutions were shut down in the southern state of Karnataka for three days this week due to unrest. An Indian court says students should avoid religious garments of all kinds until it makes a final ruling on the issue. For more, Dana Abdelkader joins me. She is an associate professor for the political science department at the University of Massachusetts Lowell and a research associate at Harvard University Center for Middle Eastern Studies. Thank you very much for joining me, Professor. Let's start with some background. Explain to us some of the reasoning and the controversy behind this ban. Uh, thank you, Lona, for having me. Uh, the ban uh, is out there because uh, there are religious differences, obviously, in India. There, It has always been the case. Historically, I mean, this is why Pakistan separated into a separate state uh, and the Kashmiri uh, province also in the north. There are many uh, religious issues around that. Uh, and really, the the uh, sort of Mahdi platform utilized the, those differences, those religious differences in propagating itself. So it's really driving in a, sort of a, a religious divide uh, that uh, is, is fueled by political uh, uh, differences. So let's talk a little bit more about the politics behind this, because Indian Prime Minister Modi and his ruling party have been accused of running an anti-Muslim campaign and backing violence against minorities. He uh, denies that. But tell us more about the situation facing Muslims living in India. Um, it's, it's really uh, d distinct and, and difficult uh, because uh, there are uh, underlying fears uh, in the society of Muslims. Uh, and unfortunately, it is a mirror image of what is happening uh, in many Asian countries. If we talk about uh, the Rohingya in Burma, or if we talk about Uyghur in China, uh, I think it's it's you know the same situation, and populism uh, is is escalating things. Uh, and obviously, the, the first thing to be targeted, unfortunately, are the women, because the women, uh, you know, wear an outside garb that indicates what their faith is. So uh, at the very heart of uh, the, the, you know, conflict, uh, the women are getting uh, really uh, the bad end of, of things. A Nobel Peace Prize laureate Malala Yousafzai has urged Indian leaders to, quote, stop the marginalization of Muslim women. Uh, Professor Abdul Qadir, can you explain for our audience the cultural, the religious significance of the hijab? Uh, sure. And, uh, you know, I, I just like to add here that um, across uh, the, the uh, Muslim countries, there have been moments uh, where the hijab has taken on a symbolism uh, for um, it's the quickest way of telling other governments what the incumbent government stands for. Uh, this had, has happened over the years. Whether you look at Persia in 1979, where they uh, enforced all women to wear hijab, even if they're not Muslim in Iran, um, or whether you look at Syria in the 70s, where uh, there were police women tearing scarves off of women's heads because the state was secular. So it has always been uh, the women uh, center stage uh, sort of paying the political price, basically, of wearing a religious garb. Uh, the hijab is different uh, than niqab. Uh, from what I see on the screen, what you're showing is niqab, which means you're covering also the nose and a mouth. Um, but uh, usually the more common is the hijab, which shows the face. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, its significance is, is that uh, people believe that it is par part of their faith to, to wear, to cover up their hair. Uh, basically a neck and and uh, to wear long garb. 
And uh, I, the men also have restrictions, but they usually don't follow them. And uh, it's easier for Muslim men to kind of uh, uh, become part of uh, uh, the fabric of society uh, uh, more than the women. And I, and I think it is a little bit confusing. Some of those are face masks and some of those are distinct from the hijab. So thank you for, for explaining that to us. In the last moments that I have you, I'm hoping that you can also explain what we've been seeing with some of these counter protesters showing up uh, wearing saffron shawls. They're protesting uh, the the Muslim uh, protesters who are, are upset about the ban. Do you do you fear that this has the potential to turn into really a religious conflict, an all out culture war in India? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, it has the potential for that, because those those sentiments are not new to the society, um, and and you know uh, by enforcing whether women wear you know hijab or not, um, I don't think it's it's uh, for a government or any. Uh, uh, power that be in society to decide that you know uh we believe and and uh india is a democratic country so it, it should also practice that that people should wear what they want to wear all right professor dana abdul thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you